Now, uh, there are three sets of work, okay, has been done in past that made it possible to turn a hardware concept into reality as a modern computer. Okay, three major work. One is introduction of Boolean algebra, another is invention of transistor, another is integrated circuit or IC technology. Okay, and they are pretty old school technique, right? And we are still following it. These are still relevant in modern days. Okay, so this Boolean algebra was introduced by uh, George Boole, a mathematician, in 1854, and he wrote a book called An Investigation in the Laws of Thought, and during that, he proposed this kind of uh, uh, Boolean algebra. It was in a different form, but uh, what what we'll be seeing in, uh, in today, uh, not today, in, in, in contemporary uh, context, uh, this there are different term, terms and terminology, I think, in back in 1854, uh, but it has been evolved from then. Okay, so that's the base of the of the logic calculation. And then next is 1947. Okay, 1947, almost 100 year from 1854. Right, it's less, little less than 100 year. Uh, William Shockley, that's the prominent name. Of course, there are other in the team, like John Bardeen, Walter uh, Bratting, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, they invented a little device called transistor. Okay, So, transistor is a device which, which can implement a controlled flow of current. Okay, controlled flow of current. And that's not the interesting thing because a mechanical switch also can control flow of the current because you can make it off and on. But point is that that off and on can be electrically triggered. Okay, can be electrically triggered. So, so this specific device, this, this transistor device, is a device which can be turned on and off, like let's say, Conceptually, we are saying that turn on and off through another electrical signal. Okay, there is no manual invention intervention that you just basically go and turn off the switch and turn on the switch. So it's kind of an electronic switch, you can say. Electronic switch in the sense you can control the flow through that device electrically. Okay, so. Uh, we'll 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 talk more about this little bit later in the in the semester on the transistor how it works mostly in the logical domain okay but that is the base point of realizing or implementing boolean algebraic expression onto electronics okay without a transistor as a device if it were not invented it wouldn't be possible to make Boolean algebra implemented on electronic devices. Okay, so so what I'm saying, you can actually uh, combine different transistors together to make some logic function. Okay, so you can you can electronically pass some Boolean values like zero and one means off state and on state from voltage perspective, and you can get as an output side and on and off which is like logical true or false depending on what function you were implementing okay now 1947 when this transistor was developed they were very big size like like almost like a, like a fingernail size okay that devices maybe little bigger than that a one single transistor all right now modern computer if you think how many transistors it contains a processor itself it contains like a little uh, over half a billion to a billion transistor can consist now it is modern processor okay now think that half a billion transistor okay residing on a chip which is no more than a fingernail size Okay, half a billion transistor on a fingernail size uh, uh, device, 
okay maybe a little bigger uh maybe uh, something like one my uh, one uh, millimeter by one millimeter square area something like that but it's nonetheless it's very small space and within the small space there are half a billion transistors combined together to make a processor okay now how is that possible that is possible by a technology developed in 1968 by Robert Noyes and Gordon Moore and who are who were prominent and are prominent even nowadays uh, they work in Intel and Intel first started with this technology and that technology had uh, uh, they developed this technology like an uh, printing a circuit onto silicon okay and what that circuit means it's a combination of transistors combination of transistor okay so given a design given a design which has like in half a billion devices half a billion transistors connected with each other in certain complex fashion this specific technology integrated ic technology what it can do it uses like different uh, i would say optical technique to imprint these transistors onto piece of silicon and it uses like a very narrow laser beam uh, to imprint things on the on the silicon and thus it can actually make very very small transistors a size of the transistors nowadays on imprinted on the silicon is at the nanometer range like like in one nanometer not even the micrometer nanometer is 10 to the power minus 9 meter right so it's we are talking about like about 7 nanometer uh, wide uh, we are talking about maybe 16 nanometer wide 20 nanometer wide 28 nanometer wide that thing right modern I know people are working nowadays. It's this chip are not available right now in that technology. Five nanometer, as small as a five nanometer width and, and length. Uh, then I know the industry has started looking into uh, like a two nanometer, two or three, right? This, these are going in very high high pace, like these device sizes are shrinking. Think like when when transistor were were discovered they were like a little more than a fingernail size one transistor now one transistor with the help of this ic technology we can imprint it in a footprint of an like a five nanometer or seven nanometer right so that's enabled us to pack in that many transistor half a billion transistor within a within a fingernail or little more than fingernail size area Okay, so these are the three key things that made possible of making modern computer. Now, the study of transistors and IC technology is beyond our scope. Okay, it's a part of electrical engineering. They learn it, they study it. Uh, there is like billion dollar industry behind that study. Uh, that they are big players, key player like Intel, like uh, uh, TSMC, Taiwan Manufacturing, Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Uh, they are more on the IC technologies, and there are design houses uh, uh, like Intel. Uh, there are uh, like Qualcomm, uh, like Broadcom. Like those are all hardware design houses. Uh, AMD, for example, another processor design house. Uh, so these things are all, all related to electrical and electronics engineering. Okay. Now the study of Boolean algebra and logic design is a common part between computer science and electrical engineers in this in this in this field of computer architecture. Okay. And Boolean algebra and logic is our domain basically. Right. This is computer science. So what we'll do, we'll quickly review Boolean algebra and logic design because I expect in this class everyone is everyone is equipped with well equipped with Boolean algebra understanding and logic understanding. What we'll review quickly on the Boolean algebra, and then we'll try to 
spend some time on the logic design aspect uh, to kind of understand details of the computer architecture and how things are done. Again, logic design in a detailed sense are also a part of electrical engineering study. Okay, but we'll just touch base on it, on that, on that area. So, but what we'll do on the, on the logic design side, we'll try to see how the ALU memory and controllers are designed. Okay, uh, and, and implemented, uh, especially the ALU as an example, uh, we'll do that. All right. Uh, but there are beyond that, there are many, many other topics in the real logic design class. And if uh, someone is interested from you, uh, you can take some classes from electrical engineering. There is a very good class on logic design uh, there. It talks about really like not really focusing on the ALU memory controller, this computational part, but in general, how a digital logic uh, uh, circuit or, or systems can be designed. Okay, not everything in the digital world is a processor, is a microprocessor. There are many other, many other component other than the microprocessor, which is digital embedded with the controller. Uh, for example, uh, your um, this. Uh, soda vending machine machine and the, and the coin changes like you, you insert a note and it you buy and purchase and, and and soda can and it gives you back the changes right how the changes are computed it in, it's in conjunction with some sensors uh, and 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 some digital logic embedded which is not a processor not a general purpose processor in any sense uh, but they are still a digital circuit which kind of compute your change to be returned and then accordingly dispenses the coins. Um, so this kind of design is also taught in that class. Okay, but what we'll focus on in this class is mostly how we can logically de design and implement ALU memory and controller. 